What's happening guys? Today I'm gonna to show you three things you can do so that you never hurt your lower back in the gym again. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna rock you. I'm gonna rock you. I'll have you begging for mercy, begging for mercy. Oh Something I wanted to talk to you guys about in today's vlog is the fact that last week at Metabolic, we had a couple clients tweak their lower back while training. And you know, this got me to thinking, what are three things that you keep doing that are causing you to continue to hurt your lower back each and every time you train? I've really identified three things, three core principles that I think if you guys can learn from this and take from this and apply it in your day-to-day -day training, it's gonna help you out tremendously. Point number one, ego lifting. So let's say we're doing a heavy kettlebell goblet squat and maybe on a given day, I don't feel 100%. Like today, I got a little chest cold, definitely not at my strongest. So what I could do on the past, I have uh, squatted Bertha. We call this bad boy Bertha. It's 153 pound kettlebell. I weigh 155 pounds, so it's just about my body weight. So that might be a little much for me today. So I'll step down and go down to Tina, which is our 124 pound kettlebell and really keep my form in check and get a lot out of it. It's just auto-regulated, guys. It's how you feel. But the biggest thing is I'm gonna go by how I feel. I'm not gonna look at what Tony next to me is doing. And if Tony's doing Bertha, that I'm come hell or high water, I'm doing Bertha. That's how you get hurt, all right? Because at that point, you're not training to create a better, better version of yourself. You're training using your ego, okay? And that is a very dangerous thing. Alrighty guys, point number two, we're gonna talk about the hip hinge and how a lot of people do that improperly. So there's a couple key points here to think about to hip hinge properly, all right? Point number one, I'm gonna turn sideways here. You need to have your knees soft. That means do not lock your legs out to hip hinge. When your legs are locked, the problem with that is you're gonna be limited with the amount of hip extension you can get. And it's funny, I can feel this immediately in my lumbar spine, in my lower back. When my knees are soft, I have a lot more elasticity in my hamstrings, which is gonna allow me to really get a lot of hip flexion and take pressure off of that lower back. Your body is a kinetic chain, so the tighter you are back here, that's gonna shoot right up, pull right on your lower back, all right? So that's point number one. Point number two, I like to tell people a lot, Pretend like I put my finger on your hip right here. If my finger's here, as you're hinging, and I don't move my hands, your hand should be pretty distant from your fingers as I come back. When you see people who don't know how to hip hinge, they're like this. So their hips are not moving, their shoulders are moving, right? So once again, you wanna push your hips back, and then you wanna pull your hips forward, squeezing the glutes. I like to use a wall here as a, as a prop when I do this, so if you're not sure what this feels like, stand about six inches away from the wall, chest up, shoulders back, got your butt to touch the wall, good. Let's go out a little further, do it again, push your butt towards that wall. That's gonna give you the sensation of what it feels like to properly hip hinge. Once again, if my legs are locked and straight like this, guys, I'm, not, I'm gonna be very limited there, okay? And essentially, that's fine when you're trying to stretch your hamstrings, but anytime we're adding load to that, unless you are a really, really strong dude or female, and you're using a very, very light weight, which we don't often do, um, you're gonna hurt yourself. And my third and final point about why you continue to hurt your lower back if it keeps happening again and again. Understandable, guys, we're all tired, we're under a state of duress when we're training, but you cannot lose your mental focus and concentration, particularly with two different areas your abdominal wall 
and your scapula, okay, your shoulder blades. So let me show you what I mean. Say we're doing a dumbbell goblet squat here. When I'm doing an exercise like this, I am bracing the hell out of my abs. By that, I mean, if someone's gonna hit me in the stomach on every single rep, I am flexing that muscle, I am squeezing it, I'm making it hard as a rock. By doing that, this is the center of that bridge. I always talk about this, but it's true. This is the keystone, all right? If we're lax, if we have laxicity in there, now the center, which your lower back is a part of, has been weakened and all that pressure is gonna go there, it's gonna break, it's gonna fall apart, it's gonna become a pressure point, okay, for that dumbbell goblet squat exercise. So point number one, brace your abs. You have to think about that, not on every set you do, not on every other set you do, not every day, on every single rep that you do, if you wanna optimize your safety in the gym. Also, along those lines, the shoulder blades, right? Really retracting your scapula and keeping your shoulder blades engaged in your thoracic spine as much as you can do, all right? So that's gonna vary from person to person. My upper back mobility, as you guys can probably tell, is not amazing, but my intent is to drive it back and retract my scapula. In doing that, I'm going to protect my lower back. Once again, if I come apart a little bit, but my intention is to stay back, the focus is primarily gonna be on my upper back there and I'm gonna be okay. If I don't think about that at all and I'm just like this, bam, right into the lower back. Guys, do this at your desk right now. As you're sitting there, just lean forward and protract your shoulder blades. You're gonna feel a stretch in your lower back, all right? So core tight, shoulders back, happy back, safe back, healthy back.